Alrighty, so today I will show you a simple setup for performance testing of a .NET Web API using K6. My name is Vasily Olenik and you are watching the integration testing series where we go through everything you need to know to get started with integration testing in .NET. So what is performance testing? Performance testing is a kind of non-functional testing where we go through the speed, reliability, responsiveness of our web application. In short, we set up scenarios where we emulate normal loads, heavy loads during small period of time, during a longer period of time. We test how we handle 100 users, how we scale to meet the demand of 1000 users, and basically how our application responds to that. There are some types of performance testing that we need to go through. So those are smoke, load, stress, spike and soak testing. For our performance testing, we're going to use a tool called K6. It's written in Go and we can write code in JavaScript and run it via CLI. So that's really comfortable for us .NET developers since we already have a love-hate relationship with JavaScript anyway. For our demo, we're going to take the basic web API template that we have in .NET and run our tests against it. For starting up the application, I'm going to use the simple terminal with the .NET run. And as you can see, I have the application running on 501. So basically we have over here a K6 import, which we are importing an HTTP uh, function, that an HTTP client that we can call. Next, we have a sleep function, which basically helps us emulate uh, user behavior on the site because we don't have users that hammer away 300 or 200 refreshes on the same page during a, sec a single second. So hopefully not. Uh, the next thing that we have here in our test are some options where we have VUS, which stands for virtual users that our tests are gonna use. So we have in this case, a single user that does something each iteration and then we have a duration of 10 seconds so basically for uh, the test itself is going to run for 10 seconds uh, the next thing we have a sim simple constant the base URL for our web API and over here we have a function which is called default where the proper test will take place so to run our test, it's enough to go to the terminal, type down k6 run smoke test.js and just hit enter. And as you can see, it starts running our test over here. So we have some requests going on and we have the duration of 10 seconds. So by the end of the test, we have some report over here. So the HTTP request duration with an average of nine milliseconds, then failed rate, iteration duration, we have our one second, which is mostly because we have sleep over here, how many iterations there were, etc. Third is the catch though, we're not validating anything related to performance. And moreover, we not even check on the response that we have from our weather forecast. If you remember, it returns the weather forecast for five days. What if due to performance issues, we have a degraded result of only two days or something like that? We're not validating anything in here. Even if this is kind of performance test, we can't call it a performance test. We're just running requests to our web API. In order to start validating and to start running real performance tests, we'll need two things. First of all, it's checks and then thresholds. So let's get started with the checks. Over here, we have a similar test. So it's basically the same HTTP, but besides the sleep, we are importing the check function as well. So the duration is the same, a single virtual user, 10 seconds, the same API. But over here, we're allocating the response from our API to this smoke test variable. And then we run some check. First of all, that the request was successful, which in our case, it is a 200 response. And then that the forecast is for five days. So we're just taking the JSON response and counting the length. So if I go back to my terminal and type k6 run and checks test, now, by the end of this test, we're going to see a different result a little bit. And over here, we can see that we have two checks that we are running. So first of all, that the request is successful and then the forecast is for five days. So this string is basically what we'll get over here, which is a nice representation of our test result. So the next thing that we might want to check are some thresholds, for example, for request duration to be under a certain amount of time. So 
let's go over the test first and then we'll go over some changes in the weather app. Over here we have a simple threshold test where we go that 95% of our request we want to be in under 300 milliseconds and then the request failed rate to be basically zero. You can see over here a small comment and you might wonder what that is. That's a small scenario that I've set up in the controller. It's a basic creation of new HTTP client, not via the factory, but basically a new HTTP client on each and every request that calls google.com for getting a response over here. So we're gonna run this threshold test and I'll go and show you what it looks like when the test fails. So k6 run threshold test.json. Now, as you can see, we have here an error. So thresholds on metrics HTTP request duration have been crossed, which is basically the result that we expect because the request duration was about one and 55 seconds, which is way less than 300 milliseconds. This is pretty simple setup, but as you can see, we spotted right away some performance degradation issues due to us creating new clients on each and every new request that we have. So the next step that we need to take care of is authentication, but there is a bunch of flavors, let's say so, to how you would handle authentication. Would it be username and password login, of using Azure, M2M authentication, API key, etc. It's all up to you essentially to implement it. But I've set up over here a small authentication test that we might look at. Uh, we have HTTP check slip. It's basically the same as previously. The only thing that change is we have over here headers, content type application JSON. We have a payload that we are sending over to a login endpoint in our web API. We're getting a login response. We're checking that the response status is 200 and then we're getting the access token and adding it to an authentication bear and we're adding it to the authorization as a bear token and then we're calling the weather forecast with those authentication headers present in there. And we're running this simple checks. It's basically pretty similar to how we've run all the other tests so far in this video. Let's get over to the fun part now. Load testing. Basically, load testing is run to see how your system performs under heavier than normal load. So if, for example, you're running on average 60 active users, you can bump it up to 180 or 200 users to emulate a peak traffic. That way you'll see how your system behaves for that peak hours. And another benefit that I've seen in the past is basically we've used performance tests in order to check if the system will stay relevant in the future in case the client company grows up and will have a larger demand for the same application. There were some other flavors as well, like loading the database with eight years worth of data just to see how it will perform afterwards, but that's another topic altogether. So back to the topic of our web app. So if for example, your normal load is 60 and then you ramp it up to 180, you're gonna test both of those extremes during a single test. So basically you're gonna ramp down, ramp, sorry, you're gonna ramp up your virtual users to something like below the normal load and then increase it up to the peak and run it there for an extended period of time. For us to do something like that, we have stages in K6 where we can specify that the duration of a specific stage in our case, it will be five minutes. And during five minutes, we are gonna ramp up to about a hundred users. Then we're gonna stay there for another 15 minutes with a target of a hundred users that will run against our API. And then we're gonna ramp everything down during a single minute to zero virtual users. So in here, I wanted to go over the stages features first and load testing, I would set up more than just two stages, so just try to mock how your application is going to be used during a single day. So you can set up everything and not have any unpleasant surprises in production. So the next part is stress testing and stress testing is about everything out of the ordinary bounds. The main point of stress testing is to see at which point your system will give in. Will it be a 
database bottleneck? Will it be a CPU usage? Will it be some round trips to the database? Will it be some external API that's gonna lag behind? There are so many places where the preferable thing might hit the fan and we're gonna use stress testing to see where things might go wrong. So the first type of stress test that we're gonna go through is something like this where we have couple of stages and I've picked this from some workshops that I went and from some guys from payment and e-commerce. Basically they split up their test into multiple phases. The initial step is right below or slightly above the normal usage of your application. So you scale, you ramp up your users to that point and stay there for some time and then you start in rapidly increasing your users to the point at which the system at maximum point that the system can handle. And then you stay there for an extended amount of time. The last step being you slowly starting to ramp down and test out your recovery scenarios. This is a basic increase in load, a gradual increase in load up to the maximum capacity of what your API or what your application can handle. The next one is spike test, which is a different type of beast because over here we're testing up a, an unexpected increase in demand of your application. So the idea is pretty similar to how we run it initially. So we go to normal load or slightly above or below. Then we vertically increase and spike our traffic, emulating something like a hug of death. And we go over the point of what you know your system can handle and then you stay there for a couple of minutes. Then you go back to your normal load and you stay there again for a couple of minutes. Then you ramp all the way down to zero. So the last and the least interesting one is soak testing, which is basically just running our system, our tests against our system at normal load for extended periods of times, so just to see if we have some memory issues, memory leaks, some resource consumption issues, etc. These are the most boring ones since they take a long while just to get the results. In my experience, we've had soak tests pop, pop up some issues only once. So that means I can't undermine its importance as if you suspect your system to have some reliability issues, you will likely need to run those soak tests. But I can say that those are interesting. Those are most boring ones. The next thing that you should care of is basically how you interpret everything over here and how you make sense of it. The short answer is obviously it depends. However, I again picked up this practice from other teams and basically we're splitting up how our system handled into four different levels. First of all is if the system behaved really well. So the first level is when the users have no impact whatsoever due to increased load, no performance issues, no degradations of any sort. So that's the perfect scenario. So the second level is when the system struggled a little bit with its function. So the users had some hiccups here and there, some lag, but overall their uh, job was not impacted that much. They had maybe to wait a little bit longer, but the tasks were still successfully done. The third level is when the system failed under the load. Basically users had no access to the application or some users had no access and some other parts of the app were non-functional. Level four, the system went six feet down and couldn't recover even after the traffic was gone. So I've shown you just the basics and some pretty standard things that you can set up into your performance test, which will give you already results but you can go crazier even from here. K6 has integration with Prometheus and Grafana just to send over data and visualize it on a nice dashboard. You can have also, I think the browser extension where you click through your application and then K6 records all the requests that the browser did and then generates your performance test script based on that. So you can go crazy there as well. If you like this kind of content, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell. And until the next video comes out, I'll pop up somewhere over here, some videos for you to watch. Have a nice one.